Welcome again. Now we're going to look at a few commands on looking at system information. So what commands can we use to like look up our RAM, our disk usage, um, how large a file is, what kernel version are we using, things like that. So um, these are a few commands that provide you some system information. So let's turn over, let's go over to the terminal and let's take a look at some of these awesome commands. The first command that we are going to look at is the free command. Free. Hmm. It will tell us how much free RAM we have available, how much RAM is freely available. All right. So we're going to use the free command by itself. And by the self, it displays how much total RAM we have, how much we have used, and how much is free available. Right now, these uh, amounts are a little hard to read. So I'm going to use the dash H option for human readable. And it gives us in a little bit more easier context to be able to read it. Right. And it puts it in gigabytes. Now it's a little bit easier to read. Right. My memory. I have 15 gigs of RAM in here. I am using 2.6, which isn't too bad. Having a browser open, a terminal, and I'm recording this right now only in two and a half gigs. That's pretty nice. And I have 10 gigs freely available, right? Well, what is, what swap swap is your virtual memory that is located on the hard drive in uh, the windows world is called, uh, your page file, right? Um, anyway, but that's beyond what we're trying to do here. So anyway, this displays your Ram usage and how much Ram that you're using the free command really kind of nice, right? Let's look at a few other commands. Let's look at our kernel version. Well, first off, what is a kernel? Well, your kernel is the core of your operating system. We learned this in the first week of class, right? So you might have to go back and review that. A kernel is the core of your system. It is what um, interacts with the hardware of your system, your CPU and your RAM, your hard drive, and all the drivers are plugged in there and uh, it's able to manage all of that for you, right? It's the core of this, and that's actually what Linux is. Linux is just the kernel. Then we have all these other programs on top of that, right? We have a shell on top of that, which we can interact with the kernel, which is what I'm doing right here. And we have all our GUI graphical information, right? All this is week one stuff that we learned about Linux, right? So a little bit refresher here. Um, Windows has a kernel. Um, Mac has a kernel called Darwin, right? Linux has a kernel called Linux. It's the Linux kernel. Um, anyway, let's look at what kernel we're running. You just type the uname command. Hey, we're running the Linux kernel. Now well, I knew that. Well, let's look at more information here. What version of the kernel are we running, right? That might be important, particularly when we're talking about drivers that we're using. And things like that. We're we running a 32 bit system kernel or a 64 bit kernel, right? So I'm going to use the dash A option for all. Give me all the information. Oh, here we go. We got some more information. We are running the Linux kernel on the host system. MCC is the name of my computer. And I am running kernel version 5.10.2. Uh, compiled for Manjaro. That's the version of Linux that I'm running here. It is a multi-processing um, kernel. It was uh, created or updated on this system on that date and time. And it is a 64-bit GNU Linux kernel. There you go. Have some information about your system. Pretty nice. So anyway, that's Uname. Now, let's look at how to look at our hard drive space or disk file information. So if I just type DF dash H human readable again, enter there, I see my hard drive information. Now, this is a lot of information. I'll explain a little bit how to read this, right? I'm running an SSD on this system. So it is right here. This is how non-volatile memory and this is how it identifies the partition. You can see it here. A lot of these temp Systems you can kind of ignore for now in these loop systems um, are temporary file systems as well uh, for my snap files. But anyway, uh, let's look at this. The main one that we want to look up, this is our boot partition to help boot up the system. That is part of our hard drive. Windows has a similar type of um, boot partition as well. But our main system here is forward slash our root system. Remember, this is kind of comparable to Windows to the C drive, right? Your main drive of your system. 
In Linux, it is forward slash. Again, this should be some review that we learned earlier in the weeks. So this is our main system. And it currently, the size of it is 452 gigs, right? That's my SSD or the partition size of my SSD, the second partition here. Um, I am using 114 gigs of that, and which means I have 315 gigs available, which is 27% of my hard drive space. So I'm only using 27% of my hard drive. This can be useful. My system's running slow. It says I can't save this big file that I'm trying to download. Well, why not? We'll run the DF command. Are you using up? A large portion of your hard drive is that's what's causing some of the problems are do I need to upgrade my hard drive this is some information that will be useful for you all right so that's the DF command now what if I'm gonna move to my home directory here because I have some large files here some ISO files which are disk image files and um, I want to see the size of these particular files. Now, do not confuse this next command with the command I just showed you, the df command. What I want to do now is use the du command, not the df command, for disk usage. I know it's it's confusing. And I want to know the size of this Windows install disk file that I have here. This is the actual Windows 10 install image and I want to see what the size of it is. The du command looks for the size of a single file. Not your whole hard drive, like the df command does, just an individual file or a set of files, depending what you want to do, right? So here I use the df option, human readable, and it is giving me that it is 5.1 gigs in size. So this Windows 10 install disk is 5.1 gigs in size. All right, same so size. Let's look at another one. I have a tiny core Linux image right here. Let's look at that one. DU-H, I'm just gonna copy and paste that there. Oh, that's only 206 megs, right? How many megs in a gig? A thousand. So um, megs are smaller than gigs, right? So you need a thousand megs to make a gig. So this is significantly smaller than that. This is actually very tiny, right? So that's what the du command does. Now, let's say we wanted to look at all of these, right? I can use the wildcard um, star and just look for ISO files and that will list all of them. And right here I can see tiny cores that, um, this Razo Linux distribution that I was trying out is 1.3 gigs and the windows one is is that and i can see the size of each of the files right this is not my whole hard drive space we have some students um, that get confused between the du command and the df command df is your whole hard drive or each partition the du um, is only one particular file right or a group of files right not your whole hard drive all right that's the du command very very option, right? Your hard drive is full. You want to see which, what's your largest file that you have. It's this Windows install this <laughs> that's taken up all my space. I need to free up some space. Boom, I can delete that file, free up my space. I can watch the DF command and I could see that um, usage be gone. All right, let's look at a few other files. What if I want to have some information about my CPU? Right? Well, am I using an AMD and an Intel chip? Is it a 64-bit, 32-bit? I don't know how many cores does it have. Well, let's find out. The command that we're going to use is ls cpu. Boom! Provides a lot of information. We are going to scroll up here and look at some of the important stuff here. Architecture, 64-bit. Yep, model right here tells you 64-bit as well. 64-bit. Uh, it can also run 32-bit. Well. Look at that, pretty nice, right? Um, let's see how many cores, four cores, right? Eight CPUs, four cores per socket, right? Um, and talk about later what that is. Uh, what else can we look at? Oh, model name, it is an Intel. Intel Core i7 with that model number, 1.9 gigahertz CPU. I know exactly what model, what, uh, and make of my CPU, right? So it provides some 
useful information. Here's your cache information, um, things like that. Some very useful information about your system. One other command that we're going to use to find out about system information, and this comes very in handy, particularly when you're using USB drives. This is my USB drive right here. Um, when you're looking on your system, it's the LS block, which lists block devices on your system. Let's just look at it. Here we go. Kind of looks like the DF command, right? It lists some of the things, right? It Here's my SSD drive. Oh, look at that. That kind of looks like this right here. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. And then each partition, partition one, partition two, partition three. But look at the DF command didn't list this third partition. That's my swap. That's my virtual memory, right? So it shows it in a little different. It doesn't list these temporary file systems or anything else, right? So we know that this is my SSD and then it, it actually breaks it down into each partition if I want. What I also like to look at when I run this command is I add the dash F option, which shows me how it is formatted as, right? There's different ways to format your drives, right? Um, this one is as a swap, right? It's my virtual memory. This is my boot partition, which is a FAT32 partition or a FAT partition, right? Um, what is Windows partitioned at, right, or formatted as? NTFS. That's what Windows uses. Linux usually uses EXT4 um, or other XFS or some other ones that are out there. ButterFS is another one. Um, anyway, but my system is using EXTF. Now, let's look at my USB drive when I plug it in. What drive is this going to be identified as? Well, let's, ta let's take a look here. I can go ahead and plug that in. I can run it. Oh, look at this. SDA. And it has two partitions on it. Ah, look at that. One is VFAT. Oh, just like that, but it's FAT16. Oh, an older version of FAT. That's interesting. I wasn't even aware of that. Um, and it has EXFAT right, which is kind of the newest, latest, greatest fat type of um, formatting, file formatting um, that's being used out there, right, um, by Microsoft. So anyway, it's formatted as that. I can see that it's the SD drive, so that's my block device when I take it. Let me take it out. Ooh, it is out. And now... It is no longer listed. It is not connected to my system anymore. So it's not there. So when you're installing new hard drives, when you're adding or putting away um, um, or using USB drives, this is a great command to be able to find out how it's being identified by the system using the LS block command. I hope you've enjoyed this um, explanation of some useful commands to find system information. Um, again, we use the free command. We use the uname command to find kernel information, the df command to find disk usage, the du command to be able to identify the size of files, um, CPU information with ls CPU, and the ls block command again to look at our block devices. Hope you appreciated this and we will Talk to you later.